So welcome back Alien, this is Navin Reddy from Zarisco Learnings and in this video we'll talk about how to use HQL in Hibernate. Now if you're wondering about can we use SQL, yes we can. So we can use HQL and we can use SQL in Hibernate. In fact we have seen that in theory, right? We have talked about why do we need HQL. So let's see how to implement that in this, in this project. So if you can see, we have this project here, right? We have this app.java class, then we have student class, and then we have uh, this Hibernate configuration. So I made some changes here. Again, uh, I have changed my database from MySQL to Postgres. And then I've also changed the student class here. Instead of having the laptop object, we have removed that. We, have we are simply saying role number, name, and marks, right? And let me just go to, I mean, I'm just using some simple class here no alien all the stuff let's go with simple thing roll number name and marks so what i want to do now is i want to save this project into database uh, I, I want to save the data into database so for that first of all to use hql what i will do is i will insert some values into, into database okay uh, i'll be using some random class to insert the values so first of all i will use a for loop here we'll say insert i i the value of i would be one and then let's go till let's say 50 values and then we'll say i plus plus and that's weird i plus plus and then here i will create object of student i will say student s equal to new student okay and now what i will do is i will set the values i will say s dot uh, first thing i will set is set uh, roll number we'll set the roll number as i itself so as your i value increases you have you can, you can increase the value and then you can say this is s dot set name. I will say name and plus i so that it will print name one, name two, name three. And then we'll say s dot set marks. Now I want the marks should be random. For, th for that I will use a random class. That's a concept of Kojava again. So we'll simply say random r equal to new random. Okay. And then we'll say what, uh, we'll, we'll import the package for that, Control shift o your package is imported. And here we'll say instead of marks, we'll say r dot next int and we'll specify the value, the max value it should be 100 because marks should not be more than 100, right? Uh, that's, that's great. And then we'll simply say session dot save and we'll save that object. So it should work, right? So if I run this code, there, there should be 50 entries in the table. Let's run this and you can see there is no error and we got 50 entries there. Can you see that insert statement 50 times? Let's verify, let's go to our Postgres and let's refresh this thing. And you can see we got our, uh, we got all this thing. It's because I have added this stuff here. I don't want that stuff. Okay, let's run this once again. Okay, now let's refresh and Okay, it doesn't matter, it is there. The main focus here is on student, right? If I, if I say view data and all the rows, that's how your uh, Postgres works. And you can see we got this table here with 50 entries. What I will do now is I want to fetch the values. So I want to fetch, let's say, I want to fetch the mass of a person with row number seven. Okay, I want, I want this one. Okay, how can you do that? Uh, before that, what we can do is we can print all the values. So let's go with all the values. So for that, let me remove this stuff because the, the thing is done and I will change this from uh, auto, I mean this, this will make it update so that I don't want a new table every time, right? So now let's fire the query. Now how do you file a query? It's very simple. Simply create an object of query. So that's a query interface which you have in persistence. Okay, not in persistence, but we'll use Hibernate. So let's say control space and we'll say Hibernate and we'll say Q equal to uh, now, how do you create a query? We'll say session dot create query. So that's how you create a query. Inside this, you have to specify the query. Now, again, we are not using SQL here. We are using HQL. So when you say you want all the data, we can simply say from, and you have to mention the entity name, which is student. So we'll say student. And that's it. You got this query. But hold on. How, how do you fetch a value now? Because this, just, this is just a query, right? So to fetch the value, we can simply say Q dot list. So that's the method we have to use to fetch the value. So we'll say q.list and we'll save this value because q.list will give you list value. You can see it, it, it gives you a list. So let's go back to app and let's say 
give me a list there. So I will say list and we'll specify what type of student object we want. I want, I want list of students. And I will say this is students. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Students. So you can see we got a list here. Of course, we want to import the package there. Let's import the package, which is java.util. Okay, package import done. And you got the list now. It's see, it's so simple. We are simply saying from student, it is not giving you uh, the result set which you used to get in uh, in JDBC, right? And you know, trust me, everyone, no one likes result set, okay? It is just the way because it was there. So we were not having any issue. But now, instead of fetching the result set, we are getting a list of values. And it is very easy to work with list, right? So we can use an enhanced for loop here. And we can say student s colon students. Now, once you got list, we can use enhanced for loop to fetch the value. Let's print all the values. Let's say print s. And that's that's it. If I run this code, uh, okay, you can see we got all the data here. You got roll number, you got name, and you're also getting marks, right? So let's go to student and yes, yeah, so we, we got all those things, right? So that's how you can use from student to fire the query. But hold on, let's say I don't want all students. I want specific students. Let's say I want student who scored more than 50. We can use where clause as well. Again, this student is not a table name, okay? This is not table name, this is an entity name. You can specify the where clause and you can say where roll number or not roll number, but marks is greater than 50. It's, it's that simple. If you know SQL, this is very easy. And if I run this query, you can see we'll be getting only those records, those people who are getting marks more than 50. You can see all the records here. So we got people who got marks more than 50, right? Let's say if you if you are getting a specific value, let's say I'm not getting a list, I will say marks equal to or roll number, roll number equal to seven. I want I know that it will give you only one result. In that case, instead of saying list, what you can do is we know that it will return only student object, not the list. I will say student student, and here instead of saying list, you can say q dot. There's a method called as unique result because unique result will give you only the unique result. Oh, but it's giving you error. It says uh, you have to typecast it because it will give you the object. You have to typecast it with with student and done. And instead of instead of using for loop, we can simply print the value of student, right? And that's it. We can also use where clause here. Oh, can you see that we got the data with a, with with row number seven, with name seven and forty nine? Okay, again, you can verify that in your table as well. Right, so that's how you can you can use HQL query here. Can we use some more queries? Yes, we can. We can say we can create tables. We can use join tables. We can use what else? We can use here. Uh, okay, we can also specify the columns. Okay, if you don't want the entire table, you know, you can specify the columns. You can say select star from student. You can also specify select star from student. Run this query, and okay. Now in this case, what you would do is. Oh, star doesn't work. Let's use something else. Let's specify all the values or all the columns. We'll say roll number, uh, name, and marks. Now, this will not work. The problem is, <laughs> okay, so what, what, what is that just happening here? The problem is what is not working is when you specify the columns, it is not sure that you are getting the actual object, okay? So what it says is instead of using the Instead of getting a student object, what you will get is you will get list of string. It will, you will get an array of strings. Okay. Again, how to solve this, that we'll see in the next video. But in this video, just remember, we can use HQL queries. In the next video, we'll talk about how to solve this issue. Okay. Uh, what else we can do here in this? Yeah, we'll talk about that in the next video. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching and do subscribe to watch the how to solve this problem. So thank you so much.